What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to another Resplendent review. This time I'm going to be taking a look at Jafar and going to be going over the different builds that you can run on him and at the end I'll have a special bonus segment which a lot of you really really like. So Resplendent Jafar is a gen 1 colorless dagger and he's an infantry unit but he is a gen 1 unit so he doesn't have the greatest stat allocation. He does have a weapon refine that's also pretty old in Deathly Dagger, so he's basically able to get 10 damage as the splash damage after the combat on the target and the foes within 2 spaces of that target. So this does help him spread the damage out, but other than that, this weapon doesn't really give him like any kind of extra stats or any extra effects. He does have mage sweep built into this weapon, but you're gonna be facing a lot more enemies than just mages. So this, you know, conditional fire sweep effect just against the mages is way too niche in my opinion. Um, and he should have gotten something better, but this is basically an outdated weapon refine. And his stat spread is also not the best. He does have very low attack at base 28, even after the resplendent stats. Thankfully, he does have a super boon in it, so you should always be going for that. And his speed is also not impressively high. It's workable at base 35 now, and his bulk is also kind of middling. And even if he gets an arcane dagger, those stats are still going to be holding him back. And uh, overall, he's one of those units that you invest into because you really, really like him. And as someone who really likes Jafar, I've invested into him. And he needs every single stats and every single merge that he can try and get. So these resplendent stats really help him. Uh, but still, there's just way too much competition. And just to give you an idea, the Deathly Dagger now compares to a free-to-play inheritable dagger. We have Bone Carver, which basically trades the magical fire sweep effect for plus 5 attack and speed and just lowers the splash damage by a bit. So Bone Carver from Desert Dean is this really good weapon which any unit can have access to. Comparing him to the existing dagger units, um, we do have Legault and Kaze getting pretty good weapon refines and they also have similar low attack than Jafar but even then they are able to have just more attack than him despite him having the resplendent stats and also attack super boon so these two are the units from three star four star pool which can be invested into with their weapon refines jafar can also be compared to uh soth who is pretty much one of the best three star four star dagger units because of his peshkats refine and he just has way higher stats while also having same speed as jafar and pretty much same bulk and Gaius is kind of similar stat wise to Jafar when it comes to lower attack but still even he is able to have extra attack and this weapon of Gaius at least gives him like true damage so that can help him in combat. Let's not forget our Grail dagger units which are going to be getting refined. So Krania is going to be getting refined at the end of this year and then Gangrel is going to be getting refined in like March 2024 so a bit more than a year. So even though Jafar is a 5 star locked unit and now available in the special rate, all of these easily available daggers really give him a lot of competition and it doesn't really give incentive to players to build him up over these other dagger units. And a lot of them ended up getting really good weapon refines even though they didn't have the highest attack stat just like Jafar. So that's pretty much the reason why you don't really see too many Jafars. And I hope that Arcane Dagger comes out and it actually gives him like true damage which could actually help him but even then you know stat allocation is going to be everything with the Arcane weapons. So if you want to build up Jafar on a budget then you can simply give him Poison Strike and double Savage Blow. So this way he could be used to spread the splash damage in the limited hero battles or in something like Arena Assault and at least the magic sweep effect can help you on a budget so just go all the way with the passive damage but if you want to invest into him then you can definitely get some good fodder out of the divine codes and attack speed ideal 4 and you can just run wind sweep now with null follow up sacred seal so he's not going to be having the highest offenses because we're pretty much using null follow up sacred seal but this at least allows him to safely initiate combat and spread the chip damage and in this case he's going to be doing 17 chip damage with his weapon and savage blow so definitely something you can do if you want to keep his weapon but honestly I feel like if you're investing into him heavily then it's worth switching his weapon out for something a bit modern and something a bit better. Florid Knife Plus from Thief Soul is just that weapon because it gives you 
Cantu 1 despite being an infantry unit and it also gives you extra attack and speed and that is exactly what Jafar needs. And now that we have attack speed finish 4, we can basically get the true damage out of it whenever he triggers a special so that can help him in his damage output. And then speed smoke 4 could work on a mixed phase build like this so that he can get the extra damage reduction to hopefully survive hits. Um, so this is a max investment build that you can run on him with Thorid Knife and it's definitely one of the better weapons for him with giving him the mobility of Kanto 1. And keep in mind that this is flat Kanto 1. So even if he teleports with something like Order's Buff, he's still going to be able to get that one Kanto, which is really good for retreating. You can also use him with Vicious Dagger Plus and basically the Wind Sweep build. But Vicious Dagger here definitely allows him to get more offenses than the other Wind Sweep build, which I went over. Because it does have partial Law Follow Up built into it and also gives you extra attack and speed. So this way, you can just double down on his offenses completely by running the ideal skill, attack speed oath 4, and also blade session sacred seal. So if you want to go all out offense and not get counter attack, then vicious dagger or courtly candle is your friend. You can also run him with Thorid Knife and if you really want to use him with Lethality then this is one of the ways of doing it. So none of the weapons really make it easy to trigger uh, Lethality but you can I guess run Flashing Blade 4 and just run Time Pulse and Special Spiral and he will need some help setting up uh, the Lethality. So hopefully you can use someone like Duo Alphonse, Asker, Duo Chrome, any of them to just pre-charge the special. And once it's pre-charged, Special Spiral is going to be helping you just have it at 2 cooldown. And then if he triggers Flashing Blade 4 and it's Special Acceleration, then he can trigger Lethality on his second hit. So he definitely needs a lot of support with this uh, because his speed is not the highest even with this. It's only like 60 plus speed, which is not really all that high in modern metagame. So yeah, this is the build if you really want to use Lethality. And if you want to use him with Lethality in Summoner Duels, then Ouch Pouch is the way of going about it. Because you can run Ouch Pouch and Time Pulse and pretty much have Lethality at one cooldown. And if you can get an Infantry Pulse support from anyone in your team, then he's going to be able to have pre-charged Lethality. So this is something you could do in Summoner Duels, Book 3 and Prior Metagame. Even with this, I don't think he's going to be that useful in Summoner Duels S because Volk Forma is going to be pretty popular that a lot of people will get. And Volk, of course, has a much easier time triggering Lethality in any of those game modes. But if you like Jafar a lot and if you want to grind the favor level on him um, for Summoner Duels, then this is the build you can run. And whenever there's Secret Maneuver, it actually helps you pre-charge Lethality without any kind of help from any allies. So that is definitely pretty amazing. You can also use him in Aetherite's offense and this is pretty much one of the ways. Um, so you can just run him with Duo Thor and Duo Duma in the Chaos Season. And it's a bit easier to Vantage in the Chaos Season um, because units are not going to be getting their Mythic buffs. So at least with this, you're able to do some chip damage with Bone Carvers, Double Savage Blow, and then hopefully Vantage from there. You can also run Duo Thor so that she can give you the exposure, um, and you can essentially get that true damage, which can help with Vantage. And Duo Duma can also be run in like uh, Etherade's offense for Chaos, because his upheaval is going to be doing that 7 damage. So it goes really well with our chip damage playstyle here. It is definitely not that consistent, and it's definitely not going to be all that easy to consistently Vantage with this kind of build. But if you really want him to use an Aetherade's offense, then this is something you could do. And whenever we get the rotation of Book 1 units being bonus again, Jafar could be used with a build like this. Finally, in Arena, he could be used at plus and merge with C-Dual Infantry 4. And even though he does have a preferred weapon, I would just suggest having Florid Knife because having that Kanto is just so useful in Arena. And you are going to be running the Oath 4 skill, but again, the Kanto you get is a flat Kanto. It's not exactly like Fortress, so it can work with the teleportation. So Attack Speed Oath 4 is going to be helping you a lot. And we pretty much have to compensate for the lost SP by running a 300 SP slot C skill in Attack Speed Oath 4, so that we can run Florid Knife. Um, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to reach like 185 BST even with a tier 4 300 SP slot B skill unless you run Deathly Dagger again. So this is an arena build. And now let's move on to the part which a lot of you really love. So if I had to give him a weapon refine or improve his weapon refine, then I would pretty much give him these effects. So I would give him minus one special cooldown, which is really helpful for especially a low attack unit. And then he could essentially get like plus five stats um, with this primary effect. 
and then I would give him special cooldown minus one at start of every turn. So with this weapon, he's basically able to pre-charge Glimmer, Ruptured Sky, Moonbow um, at start of every turn, and that is incredibly good. And if you want to run Lethality on him, then he can basically try and pre-charge Lethality himself with this weapon and this effect, and also by running Time Pulse. So we have seen this effect before on Duo Thor, so this is going to be helping him tremendously improve his damage output using the specials. And then he's still going to be having that 10 chip damage, but he can also inflict the deep wounds effect on the target and the foes. So this definitely makes him a bit more unique compared to all of the other units who have splash damage. And I think it definitely fits, uh, you know, Jafar, Angel of Death. And then finally, in the refined part, he can get even more Spectrum plus 5. And then finally, he has got... Uh, a conditional fire sweep effect that works on his speed. So at least this is better than the maid sweep that he has got. So with this, he's able to safely attack the units and spread the deep wounds effect and the chip damage, and they can only really recover out of it. So it would make him a pretty unique unit, especially with the fact that he has got uh, the way of pre-charging his specials and even lethality with the special cooldown in his weapon. So it could improve him, uh, especially with the low attack stat that he has got. So let me know in the comments what you think about my refined theory craft. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to share this with your friends who are trying to build him up after his amazing resplendent art. And if you enjoyed, then make sure to leave a like and a comment, helps me tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more resplendent reviews, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Layla was against Jafar. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.